caching adds performance to your website and is an essential strategy which should be used by modern web applications to increase speed. In this video, we will implement caching for a Spring Boot Spring MVC project which uses MongoDB in the backend. I had built that project earlier in my video, Spring Boot and MongoDB building REST based CRUD services. Please watch that video to get up to speed. Next, we will implement caching to our Spring Boot app and see how we can use the provided annotations like cacheable, cache put, and cache evict to come up with a caching strategy. We will also see how to define conditional caching with the condition and unless clauses. After this video, you should have a basic conceptual understanding of caching features with Spring Boot. Here is the project which I had built earlier in my video, Spring Boot and MongoDB, building REST based CRUD services. It has a simple model class person with fields, ID, first name, last name and age. We built a repository object for it, extending the Mongo repository, which provides us the basic CRUD operations. And of course, we had added a couple of custom methods on our own. We then built a service method for each of the CRUD operations referring to the underlying CRUD repository. Finally, we built the controller where we had the create, get, get all, update, delete and delete all operations. In our application.properties file, we had indicated to Spring that we will be using MongoDB as the backend database. I have MongoDB installed on my machine locally. Let me add a system out print line for each of these methods so that we know when a method is being executed. Let's see the project in action and the problem we are trying to solve. Right click on the project and choose run as Spring Boot application. Now I have stacked my browser and the IDE console so we can see the method execution with the URL call. Let's clear the console. Let me issue HTTP localhost 8780 slash get all and we see JSON representation of all the rows in the database. In the console, we see that the get all method was executed based on the system out. Let's do a call to get a specific person specifying the first name which is unique in our database and we see that it executes the get person method as it outputs the getting record. Now every time we hit this URL, the method is executed, database call is made to get the row back even though the data is the same. That is a lot of unnecessary resource use and of course time spent. Caching can help solve this problem. Let's see how. To enable caching, first let's include a dependency in our POM file. The dependency is Spring Boot Starter Cache, which quickly adds basic caching dependencies to our app. Spring Boot auto configures Cache Manager etc. In production, however, we should use providers like Redis, EH Cache, etc. I will cover Redis Cache in another video, but the basic caching concepts and annotations stay the same. The other dependency is optional and is for Spring Boot DevTools. The DevTools, among other things, make development easy by automatically updating and deploying incremental changes to the app instead of you having to do it manually. Next, let's go to our main class and add the enable caching annotation, which as its name states, enables caching. Spring Boot will now look for caching annotations throughout our code base. Let's make our person class implement serializable. Let us go to our controller, put the response body annotation to get our method stating that the return value would be shown to the calling client. In this case, the JSON representation of the person object. Now, let's put our first cache related annotation, cacheable, which states that cache the results of this method call. We specify the cache name here, persons. The cache essentially is a list of key value pairs. Let's specify the key for this call as hash root. Now, hash root gives us access to the method like method name, arguments, etc. So, saying args0 is then referring to the first name, which will be the key used. At this point, to understand the keys, let's take a detour. On the browser, let's google for Spring Docs cache. 
Let's click this link from docs.spring.io. This is a very good reference to understand caching and I would recommend you go through this. Here are the different cache related annotations and we will be going through these. Here is the key generation strategy. If no key is explicitly specified, then a key is formed based on the method parameters. If there are no method parameters, then the key is simple key.empty. If there is only one parameter, then it returns that instance. And if more than one parameters are present, then a simple key is formed based on all of them. Of course, you can specify your own keys. Like as I was mentioning, hash root gives you top level access through which you can access and specify the method name or object an object type or arguments as keys. You can directly refer a method argument by putting a hash in front of it. We will see how to do it and then hash result is a special keyword which allows us to access the result of the method call. So if the method returns the person object then using it we can specify hash result.id as the key for example. Alright, back to our controller. As I was saying you can refer to the method parameters directly by putting a hash against it. So here hash first name which we are specifying as the key here. Similarly we can put the cache put annotation with the cache name and key for the create method. Cache put annotation updates the cache for the given key. So in this case as the new record is created it is added to the cache with the key of first name. Now we can specify more than one caches to create for the given key. For instance here persons and names surrounded by our curly braces. Let's put the cacheable annotation for the get all method. We do not specify the key, so the key for this method will be the simple key.empty. For the update, let's put the cache put annotation with the cache name as persons and the key is hash first name. This makes sense as you want to update the cache when we are making a change to the underlying record. For the delete method, we will use another annotation called cache evict which means remove the value from the cache name persons and remove the key hash first name from there. This makes sense since we are deleting the underlying record we want it to be removed from the cache also so that it is not returned by it. For the delete all method we will specify another parameter to cache evict all entries equal to true meaning remove all cache entries from the specified cache name here persons which makes sense since we are deleting all the underlying records. Let's for our testing create another shell method with the same annotation which will be invoked when someone calls the URL clear cache. Here we are doing nothing but just clearing the cache not deleting anything. Alright, let's now see it in action. I have started Spring Boot and here is the stacked version with the browser on top and the console view of Spring Tool Suite at the bottom. Let's first call the URL for the create method, specifying first name as Timothy, last name as Sparrow and A. We see the person is created with a string representation. That is because in our method we are returning two string representation of the object. Let's change it to return just the person object. So remove the two string and also change the return type of the method as person. Put the response body annotation. That way it will show us the JSON representation. As soon as we save the changes, DevTools redeploys. That is why it makes development and testing so easy. Let's change the first name to Jeffrey, hit it and this time we see the JSON of the object and down here we see that it called the create method which has the cache put annotation which also has put it in the cache. So now when we call the get call for the first name Jeffrey, it should just return it from the cache. Nothing got returned and it executed the method based on the console output. Oh, because you spelled Jeffrey wrong. Let's fix it and there is no additional getting record output as it gets from the cache where the create operation had put it with the same key name. If this method would have used a different key name, then it would not have found it in the first execution from the cache. The first execution would have added it to the cache with its own key name so that the next call to the method would have found it. But since we use the same key name which I think makes sense to utilize previous cache entries, we find it from cache. I can keep executing it multiple times and it comes back instantly as it is returned from the cache. 
Next, let's update the record for Jeffrey and change the age to 30. The cache put will update the cache with the key hash first name. Again the same thing here, we are returning the string. Let's change it to the person object to have the return more meaningful. Add the response body annotation. Save. DevTools redeploys it. Hit it again and we see the JSON with the updated age value. Let's make the get call again. We see the updated JSON return from cache as the cache put updated it and put it in the cache. So we always see the current value. Now let's clear the cache by calling clear cache. Let me demonstrate the condition keyword which you can optionally add to the cacheable annotation. So only when this condition passes would the key be cached. Let's put the condition that cache only when the first name dot length is less than 4. Save it. Hit the URL again. Oh, we forgot the hash. Let's put it. Save it again. Hit the URL. Now it executes a method since Jeffrey's name's length is more than 4. We hit the URL again and now since it's not caching it, the method executes every time, getting it from the database. Let's change it to greater than 4. Now the first call gets it and caches it. Subsequent calls get it from the cache. Finally, let me introduce you to the unless condition, which is again optional. Here I can use the hash result, which is the result of the method execution. So here the person object and then I'm using a dot age an attribute of the person object to be greater than 25. Read the unless as do not cache if the age is greater than 25. So since the age is 30, it will lead to be not cached. Now the difference with unless is that it is evaluated after the method execution because only then the result object will be available. Condition is evaluated before the method execution based on parameters. Now when we call the get, it will stop caching. Let's change it to be greater than 35. Since the age is not greater than 35, it will start caching it again. In this video, we first took a look at our application we had developed earlier in my video, Spring Boot and MongoDB, building REST-based CRUD services. Next, we introduced caching to this application by including the cache dependency and with the enable caching annotation. Then we saw various other annotations like the cacheable, cache put, cache evict and the optional condition and unless keywords in action to give us tools to implement a caching strategy. Thanks for watching.